Hello everyone and welcome to this week's webinar. We're here again at the uh, MySwing Pro Studio in Scottsdale, Arizona. Yeah, MySwing is a 3D motion capture system that uh, is used in all sports, golf, baseball, most recently in uh, shot put and discus. So we're also brought to you by Medicus Golf and kick Golf. And if you have any questions, just put them in the sidebar there and I'll get to them once we finish with today's topic. So the topic today is have a handle uneven lines. So the first thing you want to do in an uneven lie is make it even. And how do we do that? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's start with a ball that might be below your feet. So let's say that this is your normal address position, but the ball's below your feet down here. Now, what happens when you go down this far? Okay, when you go down this far, is the club does not want to set at a level like this. Okay, let me get that in the right place there. You're going to find that it wants to set more towards the toe. All right, so the first thing I need to do is move my hands toward me until I level out this sole plate. Okay, so once I once I move the grip. By my hands, I'm going to move it either up or down depending on my line. Now I have made that uh, even again. So I had an uneven line and I made it even by adjusting the club. Typically, what they'll tell you is the ball will take off to the right on the downhill line. What you'll see with a lot of better players is they'll actually pull that shot. Okay, they won't hit it to the right, they'll actually pull it to the left. That's because they made this adjustment, they just made it too much. So the ball doesn't have to go to the right just because it's below your feet. Make that club adjustment to do it up, to, to get the sole where it needs to be. Now if I got a ball above my feet this way, now the heel is touching again too much. So I've got to raise the handle this time. All right, so it's just the opposite. Ball below my feet, I'm trying to lower the handle. Ball above my feet, I'm trying to raise a hand. Because again, we're all told that the ball above my feet is going to go left. And if you don't make this adjustment, it will go left. Now let's talk about a side hill line. So let's say I was faced with a line like this. So the first thing I want to do is get my body to the slope. And you always want to play the ball toward the highest foot. So in this instance, I don't know if you can see this or not, there we go. So this would be my normal ball position for this one. So let's say I was on a downhill line. So now I'm going to move this ball back towards my highest foot because the ground is the highest back here. So if I don't move the ball back, there's a good chance I'm going to hit back. Now let's say I've got a ball, now let's say the slope's going this way. All right, so again, I'm going to line my body. Let me move the ball where you can see it again. So this is normal. I'm going to take my body and align it to the slope. Now the highest part of the slope is in front of the golf ball. So that means I would move the ball towards my highest foot, my front foot. I'm going to swing along the slope, whether I'm hitting this shot or whether it's hitting one off a downhill line. I'm always going to swing along the slope. So again, the key is on uneven lies is to make the lie as even as you possibly can. Again, ball above or below your feet, you're simply going to move the handle up or down, okay, until you get that sole level to the ground. The side hills, the downhill lines, we're going to move the ball to the highest foot from our normal ball position, so I need either forward or back. We're going to adjust our body to the slope. Now, let's talk about if I had a downhill line in a bunker, let's say, that was on a slope back here. Well, when it's when you got when you have to get it off that line, it's this side of the bunker, and you've got to clear this side of the bunker. Don't think you're going to get this big old high shot. This ball is going to come out and spin the run hard. So I'm going to get set, I'm going to set my body to the slope, just like we talked about. And with this bunker shot, I'm going to pick this club up. Roughly, and I'm going to swing down. I'm going to try to get the bounce in behind the golf ball. I'm going to try to get as close to the golf ball as I can. That'll get it more spin. 
And when you get it up, I'm going to pick this up as I'm with the slope. I'm going to swing it down and hold my feet firm. I'm going to swing firm and let the plug recock coming back up. So if I have a downhill bunker shot, that would be the ideal way to play it. If I have an uphill bunker shot where it's close to the lip, I'm going to be set again. I'm going to move the ball to my highest foot, closer to my higher foot. So that's forward. And now I'm hitting this shot. Again, I'm just going to pick the club up abruptly and bring the club up again abruptly. So it's up, right back up again. So you just feel like all you're doing is brushing it and picking it right back up. In other words, you're letting this wrist recock on its way up. All right, so remember the rules. Uneven line, make it even. Move the ball toward the higher foot. And it's either front or back. Align your body to the slope on uphill, downhill shots. And we have several questions today, so I'm going to get to those because they're all related to this subject. All right, so the first question today. First question today is from Alex. Could you please discuss positioning of feet and ball relative to target line swing path when setting up for a draw? Okay, so... I'm going to say that that's my target line. I hope you guys can see that. Okay. Okay, I hope you can see this line. I'm going to move this way a little bit. All right. So let's say that's where I want the ball to end up. I'm a right handed player and I want to get it draw. Okay. So I'm going to move this back here just a little more. That's what, this is where I want the ball to end up. That's where my ball is playing. I'm going to align my body. Slightly to the right, I'm going to aim my club face slightly to the right because that's where I want the ball to start. But my body is aimed farther right than the club face. To draw it more, I'm also going to move the ball back in my stance. So now I've, moved my, I've got my path set to the right. I have my face set to the right, but the path is farther to the right than the face. Swing along your body line, just make your normal swing. Don't get trapped into thinking that if this is my normal swing here from square and I went like this, I'm still going to make my normal swing. But it's going to look like you're swinging more inside to out, so more inward to out. So again, in the face where you want the ball to start, and your body farther right than the face, swing along your body line. Make sure you keep that face pointed in the same direction. That way it will start to the right and it'll curve back. And that's what you're all. all right, the next question. This question uh, is by Ernie. I have a lot of trouble launching a ball from a downhill live. What can I do to get the ball in the air? All right, I'm going to show you. So let me grab a couple of clubs here, Ernie. I'm going to show you something. Okay, so I have a pitching wedge. And I have a five iron. Let me grab the five iron here if I can find one. I'm just going to grab a six since that's handy. Okay. All right, here we go. I'm going to do it from the side. So remember, on a downhill line, we're going to aim our body to the slope. We're going to move the ball towards the highest foot, which is the back foot. And we're going to swing along the slope. All right, so now to give you an example, here is a sand wedge off of a level lock. Now I want you to notice where that goes up in the air. Okay? Now, we've got a six iron here, so that's where that one went, and that's where that one went. Now, you, can you see the difference in these launch angles? Okay? There's a sand wedge, there's a six iron. A little bit of difference there in those launch angles, right? So if you're on a downhill line, imagine what the launch angle is going to be. These are going to be flattened even more. So depending on the severity of the downhill lie, if you normally would take, let's say, a six iron, you're, it's going to come out pretty flat. If you have nothing in front of you, that might be okay. But if you've got a mound or something to carry, you're going to need to, you're going to, need to go and get a different club that you're going to add more off, maybe an eight iron. So that you can add more law to clear that trouble in front of you. So again, this just gives you a good way to do this. Next time you're on an uphill line, just lie your club down, 
step on the face of it, and you'll see the angle it's going to launch at. All right, if that angle, and, and you can't do this in competition, just do it when you're out, just playing around. See how high that angle is, and see that's going to clear your trouble in front. So take take, take less club on a downhill lie because you need the angle. Okay? On an uphill lie, you want to take them off top, so you just take a bigger club. All right? Next question. All right, this question is from Peter. Side hill, ball above feet. How do you how do you stop from pulling it in the left rate, left uh, rough? All right, so just like we talked about, because I've got the ball above my feet, okay, you're pulling it in the left rough because the club is setting up on the heel. So it's setting more like this. Okay, you need to move the hands up and the handle up to where that comes down level. Okay, so remember the, the ball had a tendency to go to the left off of an uphill line. So all I'm going to do is move my hands. So this, this might be my uphill line here. I'm going to move my hands upward, as you can see. Now the shaft is standing more up. That's putting the sole down more level. All right? We don't want the heel to come in first or the toe to come in first. So uphill, downhill lies, we have to adjust the shaft, okay, until that gets like this. Now, if I had an uphill lie, it might look like this. Well, I'm going to adjust the shaft until this is flat again, okay. So I'm going to go down this way, and an uphill, if I had a ball above my feet, I'm going this way. So this is ball below, ball above. All right, next question. All right, this is uh, from Michael. Uh, side hill, ball above your feet, slope such that the ball is at approximately hip height. Common knowledge says several things, right? Choke down on the club, ball go left. Do you take an extra club and where do we position the ball? Okay. Again, so we have a ball above our feet. Let's say it's significantly above our feet. Let's say it's up here. Right? It's not going to go left if, again, you raise the handle to make this lie go this way. Okay? And you got to remember, when it's up here, your swing's going to be much more around. Once you want below here, it's going to be much more up and down. So I would aim the face a little bit to the right, <clears throat> but I'd also move the handle up and just feel like you're swinging on the arc that the shaft is setting on. I wouldn't want to swing back and go up here because then I have to flatten it and go the other way. Just feel like it's more around you on either direction. And when you're coming on this side of the ball, you just have to make sure you're not rotating that face over. That's a really good way to pull a hook. So when you're swinging on this angle, just turn your body through it, keep your club face, what we would call square to your body, which would be up and down, right? instead of rotate it over. And again, you don't want that club flying around behind you this way. Keep it out in front of you this way. Boom, boom. See, so my hands are here, the club's there, instead of the club head being over here. Right? You can get away from even doing this. But again, you got to make sure if, if it's dictating that you're trying to hit it left, you don't want to hit it left, what are the things you have to do to not hit the ball left? Don't let the face roll over. Don't let the arm and club out race the body. Keep the body in front of the club in the hand. Keep it this way to slow down that, that draw. All right. Next question. All right. This is uh, from Juan. Which way do you swing from above your feet and below your feet? Okay. So again, everybody, great question. We kind of covered this in the opening. Ball above the feet, you're going to be more around. Ball below the feet. You're going to be more up. Okay. Your swing shape will change. You don't have to change it, but you change it by moving your body. If I stood like this and hit a golf shot, you see the club goes more around. If I stood like this, like Hubert Green, the club goes more up. Okay. So my body dictated where that club went around me more or went up more. So we just have to set up to that shot. Make remember it's an uneven, uneven lie. We're trying to make it even. All right, we got another question here. Uh, this one is from John. How do you hit a short, tight lie pitch 
flop shot with 10 yards. Well, you don't want much, do you? Okay, so I'm going to take my highest lofting wedge. I have a 58 here. Um, I'm going to take my highest lofting wedge. I'm then going to turn and open the face a little bit. I'm going to get my stance more wide than I normally would because that's going to lower my center of gravity. From here, I'm going to pick the club up, swing it down and through, and here. You'll see I'm not, I don't have a lot of, a lot of body motion. So you gotta, you got to pick it up quickly and then just swing it. Now, you don't have to swing it hard because you only got 10 yards. So just feel like you let it up here and then just drop. Uh, pretty Coach is great at this. I call it long and lazy. You make a really long swing and a really slow down swing. It's slow in both directions. Long and lazy, slow. And again, when you're getting this shot, you'll notice that the club head, post impact, all right, just watch my hands and wrists, looks like this. Okay. If not, this to get that shot. So you're up, you're long, you're back to impact, and it's almost like it's a little scooping motion, but it happens post impact. So it's just, and then recock it right back up again. Remember, the key is you got to get this thing coming up quicker. Recock it back up. All right, next question. All right, this one is from Gerald. How do you stop hooking the driver? What exercises to improve my swing consistently hit the sweet spot on my iron? So you have two questions. The driver and the, and, and the iron. <clears throat> okay, remember, if you're hooking the golf ball and you're a right-handed player, okay, your path is to the right before your club face is pointing. If you're fading the ball, your swing path, that's the direction the club has taken, is to the left of the ball. So if I'm hooking, if I'm overdrawing it, the first thing I need to figure out is where's my ball starting? Is it starting to the right of the target? Is it starting straight or is it starting to the left? If it's starting straight at your target, that means your club face is square to your target line. So a club face square to your target line with a path to the right of it, is going to be a ball that starts on target and puts way left, a non-playable draw. So we would aim the club face again slightly to the right where we want the ball to start, not where we want to finish. Aim the body line to a little right of that, swing along the body line. Remember, over curves mean that the discrepancy between the face and path, okay, is too wide. The more curved there is, the wider that is. So that might be my face, and if that was my path, see, that wouldn't curve much. Let me put it this way. All right, that wouldn't curve that much. But if my path was over here and the face is here, that ball is going to curve tremendously. Now, as far as hitting the sweet spot, do you hit the sweet spot with the driver? So, again, what I would do is I would take some Dr. Scholl's foot spray. I'd spray it on the face of the driver. I'd also spray it on the face of your iron. Uh, with the iron, put the ball on a little tee, swing down, find out where you are hitting it, all right? Because it's going to mark it, typically. And again, this is not 100%, this is typically. Let's say that you're at address and your arms are too far away from this direction. Typically, if you, if you make a swing that is a little more rotational, you're going to, your misses will be towards the toe. If the ball is too close to you, right, then typically what happens is you're going to hit it in a sweet spot, but the way that you hit it in a heel is because your path is going this way. You have too much what we call linear motion. That's going to have, have to hit it more toward the heel. If I, if I made that same move with rotational motion, it brings it to the sweet spot. If I make that move here with linear motion, it hits it in the heel. So pay attention to where your arms are addressed, how far your club is away from your body, and what kind of motion you're making. Again, if you're making more of a, of a rotational motion, let's say impact is here, versus a linear motion and impact is here, those are two different impacts, two different body motions. 
will require you to have two different setups as far as your relationship between the club and the ball and your body. All right, next question. And this looks like this is the last question. This is from George. What can be done on uneven lies to give me a balanced feel of a level surface swing? Okay, George, again. An uneven line, the key is to make it even. All right, so if I have the ball above my feet, all right, I'm going to feel a little more pressure in my heel. If I have the ball below my feet, I'm going to feel more pressure in my toes. I have to adjust my body until I get in the middle of my feet. Same thing up here, it's too much towards my heel. Adjust your body a little bit until it gets in the middle of your feet. Uh, the uphill downhills, you're going to be out of balance here. That's just, that's just part of the game here. Because you have a lot more pressure on your front foot for a right hand golf when you're getting downhill. So when you go up, don't try to move over here because you're just going to catch the hill back right here. Leave that pressure right there. And when you come down, leave that pressure forward, moving the hands forward. I've got this line, remember the ball's up closer to this foot. So when I set up, I've got a little more weight on here just because of the slope of that hill. Now you can push a little more forward, right, and try to balance out your weight. But again, you're trying to swing along the slope. So move your weight until it's balanced, either heel to toe or side to side, depending on the line. Swing along the slope, okay, for the, for the uh, uphill, downhill line. And for the, for the ball above, the ball below, again, you adjust it to here, you're going to swing based on the severity of that slope. So the more up here it is, the more ball above your feet, the more round you're going to feel. And the more the ball is below your feet, the more up you're going to feel. Now, when I go like this, I've got to make sure I don't get all the weight out of my toes. So again, if I'm not hearing the weights on my toes, you've got to start moving your body until you feel your weight in the center of your feet. Same thing here. I've got to move my weight until I get it in the center of my feet. All right, well, that's all the questions we have for today. Thanks for all those great questions, you guys. Keep them coming in. Uh, I haven't looked at next week's topic yet, but we got several requests or, or several topics that were submitted. Is there something you want to talk about? Well, then just send us a message with it. What is you want it, what you want to uh, uh, us to talk? Now, tomorrow is a replay, in case you missed it, will be up on the website, so make sure you check that out. If you're down in the Phoenix area, just give me a call. We'll work together on your golf game. Until next week, I'll see you.